By the end of this video, you're going to be feeling much better about imaginary numbers. We'll be going through how to take the square roots of numbers that are negative, and then after talking about simplifying those square roots, we'll get into the imaginary number i to different powers and see what that is. And we'll begin to notice a pattern that we can use to take i to higher powers, like i to the 38th power and i to the 21st power. We'll be able to tell what those are too and we'll work through some of those problems. And then finally we'll be able to put it all together and have i to these higher powers and just add a bunch of these together and we'll be able to figure out what that gross thing is too. And then after we go through all those problems, I'll give you a problem to try and answer in the comments. And by that point, it should honestly be breezy. And as always, if you're looking for the printable notes for this video, and, and you did hear me right, I said printable notes, I've got that linked right in the description. To start us off, we have the square root of negative nine. And for this square root, I mean, we know how to take the square root of nine. We know that's just three. But when we have a negative under there, it changes things a little bit. And all you need to know there, all we need to do is we're going to break up this square root, okay? We're going to pull that negative out. What we can do is we can break this square root up into the square root of negative one times the square root of nine, right? And that's a property of square roots. When we multiply two square roots together, what we get is just the square root of these two things multiplied together. So negative one times nine, that's negative nine. So we can break up the square root like this because the square root of negative one times the square root of nine gives us the square root of negative nine. So that's completely okay to do. Now, the reason why I break up the square root like this is because first off, the square root of nine, like we said, that's just three. But the square root of negative one, we have a special name for that. We have this imaginary number i, and that is what is defined as being the square root of negative one. Now, hold on a second. You're, you're telling me we're going to start talking about imaginary numbers? Like, what are we inventing in math? Why are we talking about things that aren't even real? Well, imaginary numbers actually show up in real life. Like, we need them to perform real-world calculations. And you learn about this more if you study physics or engineering. But for now, all I'll say is that the square root of negative numbers, the imaginary number i, it is actually useful. So, let's keep going here. So like I said, i is defined as the square root of negative one. And so this square root of negative one here, I'm gonna write that as i. And so that means that the square root of negative nine is just going to be three times i. And so I'll write it as three i, and that's going to be my answer for the first problem. So that's one a, now let's do that again for one b. And this time we don't have a perfect square in 32. We've gotta figure out how to break up that square root. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is take that negative out just like I did in the last problem. So we'll take out that negative first and write the square root of negative 32 as the square root of negative one times the square root of 32. And from there, we know that the square root of negative one is the imaginary number i. So we can circle that. And then we just gotta break up the square root of 32. So what perfect square do you wanna take out of 32? Well, we could take out a four, right? That's one thing that we could do. And if we took out a four, we have the square root of four times the square root of eight, right? Four times eight is 32. And we know the square root of four is two. But then we have to keep going and keep simplifying the square root of eight. And that's fine. You totally can do it that way. But uh, something else that we could do to pretty much speed up the process is instead of taking out a four, let's take out a 16. And let's write this as the square root of 16 times the square root of 2, right? 16 times 2 is 32. So if you think of it this way, if you take out 16 instead of a 4, you actually give yourself less work to do. So either way is fine, but this way is definitely faster. Now the square root of 16, we know that's 4. And so we get a 4 and an i circled. And well, can we simplify the square root of 2 anymore? Well, no. So that's actually simplified too. And so let's combine all these things now. We've got a four and an i, so I'll write those down. And then lastly, we've got that square root of two, so I'll tack that on the end. And so we get four i times the square root of two, and that's the answer to one b. All right, so that's enough about simplifying square roots of negative numbers, but now we have to talk about this imaginary number i a little bit more and start taking it to different powers and seeing what happens because a lot of the times when we do these calculations, we multiply certain things together, we can end up with things like i squared a lot and i to the third and i to the fourth, and we have to know what these things are too. Now, i to the first is just i, right? Just like x to the first power, we can write as x. So that doesn't change anything. Okay, 
but I squared, we've got to figure out what that is now. And just knowing what I is, you'll be able to figure out what I squared is. But what it turns out is that I squared ends up being negative one, I cubed ends up being negative I, and I to the fourth is one. And this is one cycle. And what you'll see is that that cycle repeats and so on and so forth for all your next groups of four. So for example, I to the fifth will be I, I to the sixth will be negative one, I to the seventh will be negative I, and I to the eighth will be one. But I don't just want to show you all of this and have it be good. I'd like to actually show you why this happens, because this is something that I definitely wish was explained to me when I was going through this. So let's talk about I squared first. Now, we know that I is the square root of negative one. And if we want to figure out what the value of I squared is, well, how can we do it? Well, let's just take this equation and let's square both sides. So we'll square that i and that'll give us the i squared and then whatever i squared is will pop up on the other side. So when we square both sides we get that i squared is equal to, well we have a square which will cancel off with that square root. So really what we'll be left with is just what's underneath the square root which is negative 1 and that is why i squared is negative 1. So we can go throw that in. Now next is i cubed. Now you might figure out a way for us to get i cubed. Here's how I would do it. I would say that i cubed is equal to i squared times i, right? Times i to the first power. Now I know that i squared is negative one. We just proved that. And then it's multiplied by i. So what you get is that i cubed is negative one times i, and that's a negative i. So that's what's going to go here. And then lastly, maybe just doing this out for i to the fourth, maybe you'll be able to figure out exactly what i to the fourth is before I even do it for you. But here, let's go through i to the fourth. So for i to the fourth, what we're going to do, and what I would do, you can do this a few different ways, but I'm just going to multiply i squared by i squared. Right, that'll give me i to the fourth, so that's completely valid. I can do that. And i squared, I know that's just negative 1. So i to the 4th is the same thing as negative 1 times negative 1. And negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. And so for i to the 4th, I'd get that that's just equal to 1. So that gives me that piece. And so that's my first cycle of 4 that I'm talking about. Because watch what happens for i to the 5th through i to the 8th. For i to the 5th through i to the 8th, what I can do is I can just start talk, taking out i to the fourth because i to the fourth, that's just one. So for example, for i to the fifth, I can just write that as i to the fourth times i, right? Times i to the first power. And I know that i to the fourth is one. So it's, I just end up getting one times i and that's i. So i to the fifth is the same as i to the first. It's just i. And then for i to the sixth, again, just take out i to the fourth because i to the fourth is just one. So it simplifies things drastically. So i to the fourth times i squared, right? That gives us i to the sixth. i to the fourth is just one, and then i squared is a negative one. So i to the sixth is the same thing as i squared. It's negative one. And so if you repeat that, you're going to get that i to the seventh is negative i, and i to the eighth is one. And then that cycle of four keeps repeating for i to the ninth through i to the twelfth, and i to the thirteenth through i to the sixteenth, and so on and so forth. So what this means for us is that all we care about to figure out these higher powers on i, like i to the 21st power to figure out what that is, all we actually care about here is the remainder when you divide whatever your power is by 4. Like for example, if I divide 5 by 4, I'll do this out long division style, I know that 4 goes into 5 once. Okay? And this number right here is how many i to the 4ths I can actually take out. You see that I take out this 1 i to the 4th here. So 4 goes into 5 one time, and so I subtract 4 here, and I'm left with 1. I have a remainder of 1, right? That's this i to the first power that sits out here, okay? And so this remainder is going to tell me what is left out here. And whatever's left out there, I mean, it's just going to be one of these four things, okay? It's going to be one of those four. And that's going to tell me exactly what this i to whatever power is. Because everything else is just going to be this long list of i to the fourths. And I'll show you that more in the next problem. So if you're a little confused right now, trust me, I promise it'll get better in the next problem. I'll show you out more what I mean.
So for problem three, uh, our first problem is i to the 38th power. And for this, again, I want to figure out what the remainder is when I divide by 4. So I'm going to do 38 divided by 4. And 4 doesn't go into 3, so we're just going to put 4 right into 38. And we know 4 can go into 38 9 times, because 4 times 9 is 36. And then we're left with 2 as a remainder. And so what this means for us is that i to the 38th is going to be the exact same as i squared. And here's why. We know that i to the 38th, we can just start pulling out i to the 4th here, because remember, i to the 4th is just 1. We can start pulling out i to the 4th, and well, how many i to the 4th can we pull out? Well, our long division tells us that. We know that 4 goes into 38 9 times, and what that means is that we'll be able to pull out 9 i to the 4th. So this will keep going, we get 9 of those i to the 4th, and when you multiply those together, that'll give you i to the 36th. Right? That'll be the same as i to the 4th because that's just a bunch of i to the fourth. It's, it's literally one times one times one. So we don't really care about that. We just care about what's left over when you finish taking out those ones, those i to the fourths. And well, what's left over is we're going to have two more i's left over. We're gonna have an i squared. And so the value of i to the 38th is just going to be all these i to the fourths multiplied together, which is one times i squared. And so that's going to be one times negative one. That's a negative one. Okay, so you can see how i to the 38th is just the same as i squared. Okay, so that's me just showing you all of the math behind this. And I just, I really wanted to, to have you uh, with a good understanding of that. And now we can make it faster for you for all of your problems. Okay, so we'll, we'll zip right through these problems. But i squared, that's negative 1. So that's going to do it for 3a. Okay, next we're going to do i to the 21st power. And here's how quick this actually is. So we're going to figure out the remainder when we divide 21 by 4. 4 goes into 2. It doesn't go into 2, so we're going to have to just put it right into 21. 4 goes into 21 5 times. And so we're just going to subtract 20 here. And we're left with 1 as a remainder. And so that means that i to the 21st power is just going to be the same as i to the first power, right? The remainder is 1, so it acts like i to the first power. And we know that i to the first power is just i. So that ends up being the answer for 3b. So you see how quick things are when, you know, I'm not showing you all of the math behind these problems. Okay, let's move on to 3c. That's i to the 83rd power. So we want to see what is 83 divided by 4. What's that remainder? 4 goes into 8 twice. So we'll put the 2 here, subtract that 8. And then we bring down the 3. And 4 doesn't go into 3 at all, so 3 is actually going to be our remainder here. And so i to the 83rd is going to be the exact same as i to the 3rd power, which i to the 3rd, if you look at our table above in problem 2, i to the 3rd is negative i. So that's going to be the answer there. And then lastly, we have 3d, that's i to the 40th power. And so what's going to be the remainder when we divide 40 by 4? And I don't even need to show you the long division on that. You know that 4 goes into 40 10 times, right? 4 times 10 is 40. And that's going to give us that remainder of 0. So what that means is that we can fully break up this i to the 40th into a bunch of i to the 4th, right? Again, i to the 4th is just 1. So we can break this up into 10 i to the 4th. So you have 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, 10 times. And of course, we know that's equal to 1. So we know that i to the 40th is just 1. And so here's how to uh, memorize this real quick. So if you get a remainder of 1, you know that's going to be the same as i. If you get a remainder of 2, you know that's going to be the same as i squared, which is negative 1. If you get a remainder of 3, that's going to be the same as i to the 3rd, which is negative i. And getting a remainder of not 4, but just 0, right? If all of your i to the 4th will fit into the number evenly, this is going to be the same as i to the 4th power, which is just 1. And the way that I remember this, I just kind of make it sing-songy in my head so it's harder to forget. And what I do is I just say, I, negative 1, negative I, 1. I, negative 1, negative I, 1. Just like that, and already then I know exactly what order things go, and I know what I to the first through I to the fourth is, and that allows me to solve any of these problems. So use all of that, and you should be able to now tell me exactly what problem 4 is. Okay, or at least try it. Okay, so... 5i to the 16th is the first thing up. And so for this first term here, we've got 5 
times i to the 16th. So we should figure out what i to the 16th is. And to figure that out, we just need to know the remainder when you divide it by 4. And of course, you can probably know that that remainder is 0, right? 4 goes into 16 4 times, and you get that remainder of 0. And so that means that i to the 16th is the same as i to the 4th. It's just 1. And so 5 times i to the 16th is the same as 5 times 1, right? i to the 16th is just 1. And so that ends up being our first term there. Now, for our next term, we've got a 3 times i to the 23rd. So we've got that 3 there, but we've got to figure out what i to the 23rd power is. And so let's figure that out. Let's do 23 divided by 4 and figure out what our remainder is. And you know that 4 goes into 23 5 times, so 4 times 5 is 20. And that gives us a remainder of 3. So this means that i to the 23rd is going to act the same as i to the 3rd power. And i to the third power is negative i. So we're going to get a 3 times negative i. Okay? And then lastly, we have a plus i to the 26th power. Okay? So that's the last piece there. Let's do 26 divided by 4 over here. And 26 divided by 4, we know that 4 goes into 26 6 times. 4 times 6 is 24. And that gives us a remainder of 2. And so i to the 26th is going to act the same as i squared. And i squared is negative 1. So that's the number that's going to go over here. Okay. Now right now this looks absolutely horrendous. So we definitely need to clean this up. And then once we clean it up, it'll become a lot more clear what the answer is. So we've got a 5 times 1 here. And maybe it'll actually just help if I write my work like this just with parentheses so I stay consistent on this entire line. But we've got a 5 times 1, and that's 5. And then we have a plus 3 times negative i. We can write that as minus 3i. And then lastly, we've got plus negative 1. We can write that as minus 1. Okay, now, just like you can't combine, like let's say this was 5 minus 3x minus 1. Okay, what you would do is you combine like terms here with the 5 and the negative 1, you know that's 4. So your answer here would be 4 minus 3x. That's the exact same thing that you do with i's. Okay, you can't combine things that are real, right? Things that don't have i's are what are considered to be real. And things that do have i's, those are imaginary pieces. So you can't combine the real and the imaginary. You have to keep those separate. Just like you can't combine a 5 with a 3x. Same kind of deal. So... Just like the answer would be 4 minus 3x if the i was an x, right? If it's just an i, the answer ends up being 4 minus 3i. So you still combine like terms with the 5 and the negative 1. That gives you 4. And so what you end up getting here is 4 minus 3i. And that is your answer for the last problem for this video. So if you feel pretty good with imaginary numbers now, then here's another problem for you to try and answer in the comments. I want you to tell me what i to the 70th is. Hopefully this doesn't take you too long, but yeah, give that a shot. Let me know what your answer is in the comments. And if you have any questions on anything we talked about in the video, again, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Now, if you guys wanna see all of my algebra videos, including all of my other videos on imaginary numbers, complex numbers, all of that stuff, I'm gonna link my algebra playlist right in the top right hand corner of your screen, or at least that's where it should pop up. But that's where you'll be able to see all of that, my entire playlist on algebra. So yeah, definitely make sure you check that out and also subscribe so you stay up to date with all the new math videos I'm posting that can help you guys out. Okay, so that's going to do for this video. I'll see you guys soon.